Hello and welcome to your first 2015 edition of Fisher Football Focus. I'm your host, James Bailey, here to bring you all things Fisher football. The Cardinals open up the season with a tough 48-0 loss to Thomas Moore College. After an early bye week, the Cardinals look to bounce back in their Empire 8 opener against the Cortland Red Dragons. Let's look at the highlights. Fisher was debuting new uniforms on Alumni Weekend. They were also debuting a new team to the Empire 8 as Cortland joins the conference for the 2015 season. They gave the Dragons a warm welcome, scoring on their first drive. Matt Nathan scored his first career touchdown on this throw to Nathan Nagolian to put the Cardinals up 7-0. Cortland would respond with this 26-yard touchdown pass from Stephen Farrar to Jay McAllister to cap a short 46-yard drive. However, a blocked extra point would leave Fisher ahead 7-6. Following a field goal, Cortland would score again, this time on the legs of Matt Goodman. His 9-yard touchdown run would give the Dragons a 16-7 lead heading into the half. Coming out of the half, the Cardinals would have to drive down the field but settle for a Taylor Byrne 32-yard field goal, cutting the score to 16-10. Following a couple scores and a weather delay, this big interception from Cardinal Jr. DJ Legoy would give the Cardinals hope, down 24-17 in the fourth quarter. However, the Cardinals offense would stall and a Brian Providence touchdown would help put the game out of reach. A late field goal would put the final at 34-17 in favor of the Dragons. The Cardinals will look to bounce back next week against Brockport in the 11th Annual Courage Bowl. Coming up next, I'll be sitting down with head football coach Paul Vosberg, so stay tuned. You taught him how to hit a baseball. Just like that. Set How to hit a receiver. The strike zone. Taught him how to hit the upper corner. You even taught him how to hit the open man. But how much time have you spent teaching him what not to hit? Welcome back to Fish for Football Focus. I'm joined here with head football coach Paul Vosbrick. And coach, we're glad to have you here. Glad to be here. So um, obviously the, the past two weeks have been a little bit rough, but um, let's first look at the positives. Um, this past week against Cortland, you guys uh, moved the ball a little bit better offensively. Um, you did end with 17 points, 285 yards of total offense, and you really kind of held with them, at least passing the ball. Um, the uh, passing yardage statistics uh, pretty pretty even between the two teams. So um, what did you see um, in this game that you think went a little bit better than the first game? Well, I think overall we played a much better game against Cortland than we did uh, Thomas Moore. Uh, we didn't do too many things right down there, but overall we blocked uh, better, tackled better. Um, defensively, I thought we did some nice things. We didn't give up the big plays that we had given up the week before. In fact, there was times out on the field I thought our defense was playing very well. They were put into some tough situations with the short field and and they responded very well they had a goal line stance and uh, forced a couple field goals instead of touchdowns and so they, they improved they were a better football team this week than the, they were uh, two weeks ago when we played Thomas Moore we moved the ball offensively uh, better not as consistent as we'd like to um, but things that overall as a whole football team I thought we were a much better team this week uh, than we were two weeks ago uh, you mentioned the the field position game, and that really never went your way. It always felt like um, you guys were always starting at or inside your own 20, where meanwhile, Cortland was always starting around midfield. So um, how does that go into to coaching? You know, you got obviously got to change your, your play calling a little bit, depending on um, seeing that you guys defensively were always on a short field and offensively always had to go the whole length of the field. Yeah, it's tough. There's a combination of things that occur in, in uh, causing that uh field possession. Uh, some, some of it was uh, we got ourselves in trouble because we had a penalty here or there. Uh, example was uh, we get a kickoff, they kick it into the back of the end zone. We down the ball, but we get a penalty. And so instead of starting on our 25, we start on our 12 and a half yard line because of the penalty. Now we go three and out, now we punt. Our opponent now has a short field. Um, we had a couple situations where that occurred, whether it, a penalty or 
what have you, got us in the bad field position. And then Cortland got us in the bad field position too because uh, even on their, their first possession of the game, they drove down the field and mm -hmm. we had to start on our own four-yard line. They punted us uh, uh, back and then, then we had to get a long drive. Our offense did respond that time and went on the long field. So Cortland put us into some bad field positions, but we, we didn't help ourselves either. Uh, with either penalties or not getting the ball out of the in a certain area. And you don't always need to get, you know, every time you walk on the field with your offense, you don't always have to get uh, a long drive, but a couple first downs so that you, when your punter does come on the field, he's got something to work with, and hopefully then he can punt the opponent back on the other side of midfield and into a long field situation. If we'd have created more long field situations for Cortland, uh, I think that the score could have been different. So you mentioned penalties, and it always felt like you guys always had a penalty at a wicked and opportune time. Um, you had the Moral Laurel interception get called back. Um, later that drive, you had the uh, rough and the kicker call. Um, and even on uh, Coluccio's good catcher at the end tour, uh, in the fourth quarter, kind of give you guys the last bit of hope, um, obviously that gets called back. So, um, I mean, as a coach, is how frustrating is it to kind of have yourself in a good situation and just have it be called back cause from penalty? Well, penalties always hurt you, you know. And, and a couple of the penalties, uh, I don't know, uh, you can say they're questionable or whatever, but they were penalties that really took us, to, uh, the one against uh, uh, against us in the second half uh, on Mortalero's interception, that was a, to me, that was the biggest one um, because we had just received the uh, opening kickoff the second, or received the kickoff in the second half, it drove the length of the field, got a field goal, so we were within six, within one score. Then on the next series, Mortalero intercepts that ball, takes it down to around their 30-yard line. If there's no penalty on that situation, our offense had just dr driven a, a long drive. Uh, maybe they come back on the field and now finish one. And now instead of being behind 16-10, we jump up 17-16. That could be a real big change coming out of the locker room and getting 10 quick points on our opponent. That did not occur. Then we did have a, a penalty and we roughed the punter. Uh, and that the, the best thing about that whole situation was that was one of the best series I've seen our defense play because they were oh, put yeah. back on the field and so on and so forth, and they did not score. Mm -hmm. they, they held them. Uh, and there was uh, three opportunities for us to get off the field, and we did not get off the field. And finally, uh, the defense did stop them and, and so on. So uh, those penalties really hurt us. And that was one thing that was different than the first week of the season. The first week of the season, I think we only had one penalty the whole game. Uh, we didn't play very well, but we only had one penalty. This, this time we had either 10 or 11 penalties uh, mm -hmm. in, in the game, and you can't survive with 10 or 11 penalties, 100-plus yards in penalties. Mm -hmm. That will kill you every time. And to be fair, um, you did have 10 penalties for 103 yards, but Cortland had 11 penalties themselves, albeit for only 80 yards. So um, the refs were calling it both ways. Um, let's go back, um, talk a little about the uh, offense. Um, your rushing attack um, seemed a little inconsistent, uh, I guess. Uh, on the first drive, uh, obviously you guys drove 96 yards. And if you look at Tony Fusco's uh, rushes on that uh, drive, you know he had consistently ripped off eight yard run, six yard run or whatever. And then it seemed like it, it kind of uh, tailed off. And then it felt like the same way. Second half, very first drive, you got that field goal, you know, ripping off, you know, like solid eight, eight, uh, six, eight yard runs. And then, you know, after that, it kind of tailed off again. And I remember one specific point um, uh, at the end of the third quarter, uh, I looked at the play-by-play -play breakdown online and uh, it was a run for a negative one yards, then a 24 yard run, and then a play for a negative two yards. So, I mean, as a coach, uh, you know, when you see all that discrepancy, um, does it change the way you're calling the play because you don't know what you're going to get every time? Or? Well, it, it does and it doesn't. You've got to stay with what you, you, know, you plan to run during the week and uh, what you should be running. Uh, according to your scouting report, I think the coaches did a great job in preparing uh, as far as planning what they were going to do against uh, Cortland. Our execution was what it needed to be. It needed to be more consistent, and and that's what it's all about is being consistent with uh, what you're doing and not making mistakes. And you know you have a good gain, and then you have a minus gain. Then you have a good gain. You can't do that. You got to be a little bit more consistent with that. And that's that uh, really hurt us during during the game as far as if we were a little bit more consistent. Uh, and staying on the on the field with our offense and, and keeping our run game going, uh, especially in our run game. If we can get our run game going, that opens up everything else for mm -hmm. us and, and so on. And uh, 
helps us, but we can't be inconsistent. If we're going to be a good football team and, and start to win games, we've got to be a little bit more consistent and particularly more consistent in our run game. Mm, especially, um, you know, obviously bringing back your top two backs and, and Tony Fusco and James Chamber and having the, the transition at quarterback, you would definitely hope that the running game could be consistent, kind of make the, the transition a little bit uh, easier for the new quarterback. No doubt. When your running game's going, you are helping your quarterback out a ton, especially when it's his first year starting and, and stuff like that. Uh, so um, we need to be able to run the ball more efficiently, uh, consistently, help our quarterback out, uh, keep, keep moving the chains, and keep the defense on the sideline. So um, obviously um, early in the fourth quarter, uh, you had that weather delay, uh, delayed the game for about 40 minutes. And, um, you know, it really was in a, in a pretty critical time of the game. Um, Cortland had the ball. You guys had just scored. You guys were down by a touchdown. And um, as a coach, how do you go about uh, keeping your team kind of focused during uh, such a long delay, kind of like that, uh, unexpected delay in a, in a critical point in a big game like this? Well, I think you, you go in and talk to them, just tell them to relax and, and that and say, you know, get off your feet for a little while because it's going to be when that uh, thunder and lightning comes, you got at least a half an hour before you're going to get back on the field and, and you had the warm-up and so on and so forth. Uh, but every time that thunder and lightning comes, it's another half hour starts. Mm -hmm. And so on. So you just say, hey, guys, you got to relax. So we had this happen one other time when Brockport was here uh, years ago, and it, there was like two of them back to back. And mm -hmm. so there were, that was happening in the first half of that game, and there was no halftime. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the halftime was down to a five minute break be, uh, for the teams on the sideline. But, you know, you just got to keep them focused. It's the same for both teams. They both had to go in the locker room, they both had to wait and so on and, and, I, and I did feel we had some momentum going into that break a little bit because uh, we had scored now we're within one score again and uh, uh, they were sitting either second and eight or second and nine coming out onto the field and so I, I felt good about where we were at that point and uh, uh, in fact we were at a good point up to about five minutes to go in the game uh, we're within one score we need one break and, and maybe something can happen but unfortunately we we, we uh, had two turnovers in the, like the last five minutes of the game, which uh, uh, that doomed us at that mm -hmm. point. Yeah, I was going to ask you, what, what, do you have a single play in your mind in particular that you think was the real turning point that really kind of sealed the game for you guys? No, you know, you can, you can look at it, it, the, seal, the, the fumbles, no doubt, at the end of the game were right. critical. Uh, but again, I, I go back to, you know, there's always four or five, there's never one point that ever wins or loses a game, but there are several critical points. Uh, those were two real critical points. The uh, uh, Another one was like we already talked about the Mortalero interception not coming through because we had a penalty mm -hmm. and so on and so forth. And we, we had a couple other penalties uh, in that. We had, we had a penalty on one of their field goals that allowed them to get that field goal. They don't get that. If there's not a penalty there, they're 15 yards farther back. Mm -hmm. He's not kicking that field goal in that. So. There were several op uh, opportunities during the game, and, and you got to win the critical ones, and we didn't win enough critical times. So we talked a little bit before the show. Um, this is your 25th year coaching the program. Uh, you've been here since basically the inception um, of this football program, and so um, you have seen some tough times, but definitely not in recent years. So um, do you have to look back kind of at, towards the beginning of your coaching career um, to kind of think back at how you coach out of a 0-2 slump? Because I know it's been a while. Yeah, we haven't been 0-2 in I, I can't tell you how many years. In fact, even my second year when we were here, we won our opener uh, against Catholic University and stuff like that. So for us to come out of the gates and lose two uh, consecutive games, uh, I don't think we've lost two consecutive games in the beginning of a season since 1991, which is the first year I was here. Uh, and so on. And the first game of the year was against Cortland, who was uh, nationally ranked at the time and so on. But yeah, that that you know, it's we're in a tough situation right now. But that's that's what life's about, taking handling the adversity that comes in front of you, and, and so on. So we have an opportunity to really grow and respond to this adversity, and we haven't seen it like this before, as a staff and as players. Uh, our seniors have never seen this before, and and, tr and true with our juniors and sophomores. Uh, our alumni, a lot of our alumni, they are in a state of shock because uh, they haven't seen this happen either before. But 
okay, it's, it is what it is, and now let's go on. We, we did lose two games in a row in 2012 back-to-back. Uh, we lost to Salisbury and Elford, and our kids did respond to that and came back, but they, they weren't 0-2 in the beginning. That's the difference in that. So uh, we'll see. How our, I thought our kids responded well coming back for Kentucky uh, to get beat like we did in Kentucky. That was, that was tough to take, too. I thought they were better against Cortland. Um, uh, Cort Cortland's a very good football team, too. They're, they're up there. They're a very comparable team to Thomas Moore, and we played much better and had some opportunities in that game. So hopefully we'll continue to grow. We also talked a little bit before the show. Um, obviously this year you're, you're experiencing more, probably more practice conflicts than you've ever had before, and um, that obviously makes it much harder to coach as a team. Um, can you pick? Um, can you like kind of like identify like any specific thing to, to, to know why you're struggling this year, or do you think it's just like uh, just like a, as a team as a whole, you know, like your schedule is more difficult than usual? What, what do you think it is? Well, I don't think our schedule is more difficult than it's ever been. Our schedule is always one of the top schedules in the country. At the end of the year, we always see in the uh, strength of schedules. We're always up there, usually in the top ten in the nation in uh, strength of schedule. You know, our opener was against a nationally ranked football team. Then we come back against a very good Cortland football team. So, and the Empire Rates considered one of the top conferences in football in, in, in the country, and, and that. So. Uh, there, there is no excuse. We're, we're just not playing as good a football as we need to play to compete on our schedule. And so we, we, we just need to get better. We need to get better fundamentally, blocking and tackling, and we need to get better with our assignments and, and not uh, break so many assignments. So, um, and again, I, I have seen some progress over the last couple weeks, and hopefully we'll continue to make that progress. And you mentioned Empire 8, a very difficult conference, and I uh, you really don't get a week off, and you come right in next week with a tough Brockport team uh, in the Courage Bowl. Going to be a lot of fans in the stands, just like there were this past Saturday. Hopefully, the weather's a bit better. But um, you know, Brockport, a tough team. They they won their first two games in, in blowout fashion. Uh, their starting running back Dan Andrews already has uh, six touchdowns on the season, had over 200 yards last game. Uh, you know, as a coach with a team that's 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 struggling a little bit. Like, what are you looking at that you you know in this Brockport team that that makes you think that that you guys have the the upper hand? Well, you know, I, I think we, we've got to go out and play our game, you know, and uh, I, I have a lot of confidence in our coaches and our players that they're going to go out there and uh, play, to, play to their ability. And if we play to our ability, we've got a shot to win uh, any game we play uh, in that. Uh, we've got to get rid of some of those mistakes we talked about and the inconsistencies and just grow and get better. And some of our guys are going to have to step up because we have had some injuries. Um, but injuries are a part of the game. Uh, a lot of people get hurt. I mean, Ohio State lost a couple quarterbacks and still won a, won a national championship with a third-string quarterback. So you do get injuries, and players have just got to respond to that. So uh, I have a lot of confidence in our players and our coaches, like I said, that uh, they'll respond to this adversity and, and that. One thing you always try to do in uh, sports, and, and, and that is you try to handle winning and losing the same. You don't handle them any differently. You know, when you win, okay, you win. Back to the drawing board, let's get ready for the next game. I think you try to do the same losing one. Okay, we lost, all right, let's get back to the drawing board and let's get playing again. So you try to uh, handle both of them in the same manner and just keep going. Your objective is hopefully to become the best you, you can become, whatever that is. Uh, the wins will take care of themselves. If you take care of just becoming the best you can as a team and as a players and, and as coaches and that, things will happen the way they should happen at that point. But you got to take care of those things. Well, the good news is there's still a lot of football left to be played this season and you know, a lot, lot of positives, uh, as you've mentioned, have been seen. So best of luck to you, you the rest of the year, Coach, and see you next week. See you next week. Coming up after the break, we'll have senior captain linebacker Brandon Miller, so stay tuned. You got a king? Go fish! In your face, in your face, in the smallest moments can have the biggest impact on a child's life. Take time to be a dad today. Welcome back to Fish for Football Focus. I'm joined now by senior linebacker Brandon Miller. Welcome to the show, Brandon. Thank you for having me. So, uh, first off, what are your overall impressions of, of the game as a whole, really? Well, overall, 
I'm proud of the, the way the guys fought. I mean, it was a fist fight out there, and I think our guys uh, handled a lot of adversity really well, and uh, just they battled. And, but I also think on the other side, you know, there's a lot of mistakes that we made, penalties, and that's something that we're going to have to correct moving forward, especially this week playing a good Brockport football team. Absolutely. Um, as far as, you know, like specifically in the game, uh, what, what play or, or what, you know, like maybe drive do you think was the uh, turning point in the game that kind of, you know, kind of sealed you guys' fate? I just think overall throughout the game, I think penalties really killed us. Um, we had a holding call on an interception that we brought back to their side of the field. Uh, and there was also uh, running into the kicker. Um, and that kind of fostered our defense to, to stay on the field for three more drives. And against an offense like Cortland, where they run a very fast pace, up tempo, uh, it kind of tired us out uh, really quickly. But that drive also resulted in a missed field goal. So for that, I'm proud of the way that our defense uh, handled that adversity. Yeah, and like you said, um, when they did that, the, it allowed Cortland to keep on driving down the field. And you know, it really didn't set up the defense in, in good positions. Um, you know, defense seemed like it was always starting, you know, around midfield, if not already in Cortland territory all day. So it definitely has to uh, change the way you guys are playing defensively. Oh, and we're, our defense, you know, our motto is, you know, we're bad company and we're always up for the challenge. And, and that was our mentality uh, throughout the entire game. You know, we, we wanted to be out there. We were having fun. We were flying around. I think guys really played, you know, uh, extremely hard. And so um, I just think that we just have to look at more technical stuff, fundamentals, and just get better, you know, next week and throughout the rest of the season at those little details. Uh, so for you, you had uh, 12 tackles, two tackles for loss, uh, one and a half sacks. I mean, that's a, that's a very good individual performance. Uh, would you consider it to be your best individual performance as a Cardinal? Um, I feel like I definitely played my heart out. I think the hardest of any game I've ever played. Um, in terms of statistic-wise, uh, probably not. Um, but at the same time, I'm not really paying much attention to that. Uh, I'm trying to, you know, get everything lined up on the field and, and making sure all the guys are in the right place uh, so that we can win a football game. Um, but I got to give a shout out to my defensive line. Those guys are a bunch of studs up front, and they really make my job as a linebacker so easy uh, to kind of come over the top free and, and make tackles. Uh, those guys are workhorses, and they really deserve a lot more credit than I do. And, you know, the, the defensive line, you did have some trouble out there. You're missing uh, Jake Kulig, uh, Mark Greeno, Hyde got hurt during the game. And, um, you know, we saw some, saw some other injuries, you know, maybe in the secondary and stuff like that throughout the game. And, um, I mean, as a player, are you thinking about, you know, like, hey, that's a different guy behind me or in front of me, or you just go out there and play? Well, we're such a close-knit group as a defense, and, and we practiced all through camp. Uh, as if, you know, a guy goes down, next guy's got to be ready to step right in and, and do the job and, and do their 111th. Uh, so... At that standpoint, no, um, I don't look at it that way. Uh, I just look at it as, you know, okay, you're in the game, let's go. Time to play football. That's great. Uh, so you are a senior and you're named captain for this season. Uh, yep. What type of honor is it to be named a senior captain of a program that has, um, at least in recent history, such a, a strong legacy? Well, words really can't describe how much of an honor, you know, I feel that it is to be named captain, especially, you know, coming up as a freshman, sophomore, junior, I've been surrounded by great captains as well as great players uh, and guys that weren't captains that were also also great players. Uh, a guy like Mike Donaldson, who is, is such a big mentor to me uh, coming through the system, who really kind of showed me the ropes as a young as a young player. Uh, I just felt that, you know, ever since I've been here, I've, I've been surrounded by great people. And that's really kind of uh, molded me into the way I, I kind of lead the team this year. That's good. Um, we were talking a little bit um, before we came on. And um, you talked a lot about um, how you've lost two games every year since you've been a Cardinal and um, how people are looking at it different because you lost two games here in the beginning of this year. But um, can you go over like how, what's your mentality kind of as a team right now? What's kind of morale in the locker room now that you've kind of in uncharted mm -hmm. territory being down 0-2? Uh, well, we had a team meeting after our, our game Saturday and we had a team meeting on Sunday before we had film. And, and it gave a chance for a lot of the seniors and other players to kind of speak their minds and get things off their chest. And for the most part, everyone was still very confident. Uh, we know as a team, we still have to you know, find our way as a team. We got to get better as a team. Um, but I think for the most part, guys are extremely confident still. And we can still win this conference. Uh, no team has ever you know, really won the Empire 8 by running through the table. Uh, we play in the best conference, I believe, in, in the nation. So teams are going to beat other teams. And as we know in football, any team can beat any team on any given Saturday. Uh, so we just have to keep that even kill, like Coach Vosburgh always says, and, and just get better and just play week by week.
Uh, you mentioned the Empire Eight and how you still feel you have a chance. Um, played Cortland this past week, who was a new member to the Empire Eight. Mm -hmm. uh, didn't get the chance to play them last year. Did play them two years ago. Uh, but is it tough to play a team that you don't see like that every year? Um, I know, obviously, you felt that way. I was saying Thomas Moore was even more of a foreign opponent. But is it tougher to prepare for a team that you might not see all the time? Um, yes and no. I mean, you don't have the opportunity to see that team every year, so we kind of can get a, a, a game plan every year against that one team that we do with teams in our conference. But at the same time, I think it's a good challenge for us as players to be able to grow, to just go out on the field and play football. You know, don't worry so much about the X's and O's and just go out there and, ju and just play the game. And I think that aspect of it uh, will definitely help our players grow, especially the young and inexperienced ones. So Alumni Weekend last weekend, a big weekend, lots of fans in the stands. Mm -hmm. and it doesn't get any easier. You have the Col Courage Bowl next weekend. Uh, it's going to be probably just as big of a game. Um, and Brockport obviously coming in, who is a fantastic team, uh, won their first two games uh, in pretty much blowout, blowout fashion. So how do you, especially as a captain and a leader of the team, kind of help regroup your team and, and help them regain confidence in what looks like on paper to be a pretty tough game? Well, we have a lot of respect for the College of Brockport, and we have a lot of respect for their football team. They're well coached, and you know they they've won a couple games so far, and they gave us a tough game last year. You know they were no pushover whatsoever. Um, but I mean this week is is a big week for us. I think a lot of young guys who haven't been here yet, uh, they're going to experience how just amazing Courage Bowl week is in terms of uh, the young kids coming out to practice with us. And I think that's going to be all the motivation that we're going to need to be able to just you know work really hard throughout the week and get ready for a good Brockport team. Mention that, and what, what, do you th what would you say is your favorite Courage Bowl moment you've had as a Cardinal? Um, I think last year. I think the College of Brockport hosted a really, really good game. Um, they had fireworks at the end. It was a night game. Uh, I just think overall, because we had a win there too, I think they just really uh, savored the moment. I think it was just a, great, just a great night to see the smiles on the kids' faces too, just really, really great. Well, we'll look forward to that game against Brockport, and we're happy to have you. Uh, it's Brandon Miller. Uh, we're glad to have you on the show, Brandon. Oh, thank you for having me. Appreciate it. That's all the time we have for you today on this edition of Future Football Focus. Be sure to tune in next week after the Cardinals take on the College of Brockport in the 11th Annual Courage Bowl. For the Cardinal Television, I'm James Bailey. Catch you next time.